So hey there everybody and welcome to the channel. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich Charpentier, I'm the channel host, and normally we're talking about drone work, building our small drone businesses, doing construction progression modeling, uh, doing 360 images, you name it. If you can do it with a drone and around construction locations, that's a lot of what we talk about. We also talk about imaging and video in general as well. And we also talk about imaging and video in tutorials here. And what you're looking at on screen right now is a recently edited image from a location that we shot just a couple of days ago. We had a client get in touch. Uh, they were looking to get some twilight images for a home that they were going to be listing for sale. So we got out there, we had some interesting colors and uh, some interesting clouds as well. So not your typical Arizona, um, not your typical Arizona sunset. So with all that said, we're going to get into actually going through the edit of this image that you see right here on screen. So we're going to be utilizing Lightroom for that. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and get into it and check out this tutorial. All right, everybody. So several days ago, when my clients got in touch and they had a last minute request, they were looking for some twilight images at a property that they were getting ready to list. So they got in touch and they wanted some drone work and they wanted twilight photography. So right now we're in Lightroom Classic and we're just taking a look at one of the many photos. Believe it or not, this photo was shot with a drone, so no tripod here even though we had it really close to the ground. One of the reasons why I had it close to the ground was I was doing some video flights as well, making some interesting paths into uh, this decking area. So you'll also notice that I am not on screen for this particular video. And I think going forward with most of our Lightroom videos, I'm gonna keep me off screen because I wanna make sure that you can see everything that when we're looking around these, if you take a look over on the side, you'll be able to make out the catalog. And when we're in our develop mode, there's usually some items here on the right hand side and putting that little screen cap of me, all it does is cover up the details that we want to see. So let's get started with this. This is a DNG. So one of the things I did when I was setting up for this is on the drone, I had it shoot both DNG and JPEG. So I'm going to arrow over really quick and take a look at a JPEG. So this is a final version of the JPEG and some editing did happen with the JPEG as well. Now keep in mind when the DNGs come out of our cameras, whether it's a drone or a digital SLR or whatever, they usually look a little flatter than the JPEGs that also come out. And one of the reasons the JPEGs punch things up a little bit, the DNGs, however, give us more room to punch things up. So can we get something similar to this JPEG that had some minor editing from this raw file? The answer, of course, is yes. But we'll do this together and we'll take a look at a couple others as well. I think I might make a series of these because, you know, you can really tweak things. And at twilight, when we're looking at dawn and dusk, uh, some additional interesting colors usually come out, especially if there's some clouds in the sky. So I just hit the D key so that we're in the develop module. If we look over on the right hand side, sure enough, this looks like the develop module, all right? So one of the first things we can do is select our color profile. So we've got the Adobe color right here. Let's see what happens if we do the landscape version. And that warm things just a little bit. Maybe you can't even see it on your screen, but yeah, warm things up just a little bit, added just a little more brightness. Now this sky up here, we've got some clouds in the sky. We've got some blue showing through. It was actually a good night for doing twilight photography. So we lucked out. One of the things I want to do though, the, the sky's not that pronounced right now. Let's go ahead and drop the highlights. And by doing that, let's take a look at the foreground as well. Let's drop the highlights, negative 100. So we did impact this area in the front as well. Um, did drop a little bit down, but not a ton. So I'm going to actually dial this back to 90. Okay. And we can do a little more with this afterward. And let's see about these shadows here, both in the foreground and under this really cool deck. So by the way, they've got their grill built in a um, little bit of everything. Very, very cool place. Uh, I suppose if you were hosting a lot of guests, 
this would be a great house for you. Let's pop those shadows up. And we're just going to pop those shadows up. We'll do plus 59 here. So that's already looking pretty darn good to me. And, you know, would most people be satisfied with this? Most likely they would. The next thing I'm going to do, though, I'm going to do shift and double click the whites, double click blacks as well. And maybe those whites came up just a little too much. So we'll get ourselves right into this zone. Now, also keep in mind here when we push the shadows up, we're probably causing some noise in the image. And I can see noise on the uh, exterior walls here. So we'll deal with that noise afterward as well. We'll clean that up a little bit. Not that people are zooming in at this level when they're looking at these images, especially you know in real estate sales. Here, they're usually looking at a smaller screen um, than you know on a big 27-inch monitor or something. But I would like to just push the clarity, and I'm just going for plus 10 here, and we can see that noise in here, which we are going to deal with. Now, should we use the dehaze? Let's see what happens if we just punch up dehaze plus 10. Let's bring that back. Yeah, pushing up that dehaze just a little bit. Or you know what? Let's leave it down because we're going to deal with dehaze in a different way. We're not going to mess with it here. We are going to push our vibrance up just a little bit. So I am really appreciating these colors. And this does feel like it is a twilight type of shot going on right now. And there are a couple of additional things we can do. So let's get a little fancier here today. Um, you know, we've kept a lot of our Lightroom lectures very basic just to get people going, but let's do just a bit more. So with the new masking tool, here we are in 2022, with the new masking tool, we can select subjects, we can select the sky. So I could go in and select this sky and do some things with the sky. We could also use the linear gradient tool or we could just brush things in with a brush. Let's try selecting the sky. I don't know how this is gonna go because one of my last edits that I did I did not select the sky, I used the gradient tool instead. But now take a look at this. Let's look up here. Now we've got our mask and that mask has masked out the areas that uh, we want things to happen. We can see that we've got this red overlay, so kind of looks cool, kind of looks like a strange sky going on. But even over in here, take, take a look at this. Oh, let me, uh, not now, why? It's offering me dictation, that's really weird. So. Zooming back in here, take a look at that. The uh, the mask actually even masked in here for us. That, that's a pretty powerful tool right there. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. Now, we've got on the right-hand side, things are looking a little different than our standard develop module because now we can go in here and affect the temp and tint, but there are some things missing. And we can also drop highlights and things just like normal, but it's only going to happen in that mask. So now in, under that mask, I'm going to pop, whoa, that went way overboard. Let's just pop that dehaze up 10. And let's see the difference there. If we um, dial it back, yeah, going up 10 here does deepen it just a little, that dehaze. And so we've got some really good detail out of these clouds at this point. So that's kind of exciting as well. And the clouds were not your typical Arizona clouds. We've got a lot of reds and oranges and yellows. This particular evening, it was a cooler evening too. It was a cooler color temperature. So even with the sun setting, things were leaning more into the blues and the purples. And that includes the clouds and some of the things around them. So just to put that in your mind, let's drag those highlights down. So dragging those highlights down even further, that's only affecting the sky. And maybe, maybe we'll do that to 70. So this is looking like the evening. This has got the feel that I had while I was out there on location. So it's looking pretty good to me. Um, one of the other things we can do, I'm going to create a new mask and I'm going to do this as a linear gradient. And this one, I'm going to go down to the bottom of the screen. I'm going to click and drag. And what I wanted to do here was just drop the exposure a little bit because, all right, see how that's darkening up? Whoa, that's way too much. But if we pull this back just a little bit on the exposure, because remember, this is really close to sunset. Things are not being brightly lit at the moment. It was actually a very subdued evening. So I just wanted to darken that down a little bit. Maybe we'll even pull that up just a bit further. And maybe we'll take that exposure down just a touch more. So 
we're not we're not nuking this here we're not hiding this away but at the same time you know we're trying to get as realistic as we can i think i'm all set with the masks for the moment so i'm going to close that and we'll talk about actually we'll talk about the masking right now just for one more thing that we can do so one of the other things going on in this scene um we've got windows that actually are being lit we've got some lights that are going on in this gazebo area and we've got some outdoor porch slash patio lights so one of the things i'd like to do in here is actually make it look like we've got more going on with these windows so i'm going to grab that mask again let's create a new mask this time we're going to use a brush tool and i'm going to check the brush tool here on the right hand side so I can increase or decrease the size of that. I'm gonna have the flow only at 50%. And so what do I wanna do here? I'm going to do a color temperature adjustment and an exposure adjustment. Let's just try that at, oh, well, we'll go with 0.6 and see how we're doing. Uh, I'm now going to zoom this back out here. So window number one, I'm just gonna paint into that window. We're not looking in here um for anything in particular but we are just getting a little more brightness coming out of there so let's take a look we did that at plus 0.60 let's bring it way up just freakishly up so that you get the idea see what it's doing it's actually pulling in you know it's getting us some more detail there but we're gonna bring this back down to just that 0.6 we like that that worked fine and i had also warmed it a bit just because the light that would be coming out of this window from inside is most likely going to be a little warmer i'm going to shrink this one down here just to get that to pop a little bit more once again people are most likely not going to be zooming to this level so what we're doing here um is just popping things up a little but not too much i'm going to go over to this one as well and on the mask that we have, we've got some little tiny dots in there. Let's see here. You can barely see where we've been masking so far. And the next thing that I'm going to do, let's make that a little bigger. Let's go over to those porch lights. So just a little bit brighter, just a little bit warmer. And as you can see, these were meant to be bright and warm anyways. Now let's head on over. There's some more right in here. So we'll go with that one and we'll also brighten that one up as well. Now, there's something going on here. We're actually getting some of the sky reflection in a couple of these windows, which looks really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and create another new mask, a new brush. And this time we're not going to, uh, we're not changing the temperature there. Uh, we will, however, let's see here. Let's drop the exposure just a little bit. Let's drop it all the way down to negative 0.1 just to see what happens here. And let's go ahead and brush in here. And we're just trying to, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so brushing right up there. But there we go. And I'm also going to go use this window over here. So we drop the exposure because maybe I want to get some of that reflection out of there instead. And of course, we've got this one right over here as well. And we've got some light kicking off from there as well. So we're just doing a little fine detail stuff here. You don't have to go through all of that if you don't want to. Now that we've gotten these, let's see what happens. Let's drag that exposure all the way down. Ew, terrible. So let's bring that exposure. Let's bring that exposure back in maybe right in here. What happens if we did the dehaze in here too? No, that's not really helping too much, but we will stay with this dropped out exposure just slightly and let's zoom ourselves back out and I'm gonna go ahead and close that mask. So now we've got, if we're looking at this as you know a, a, a lay person, someone who doesn't do a lot of photography, we can definitely see some of the clouds in there. So even with me zooming in and out here, um, we are seeing some of that reflection, and we're also seeing some of the light coming out of the other windows. Plus, we popped up those patio lights just a bit. There's one more thing that I really want to do in here, which is go down to detail. So we just went down to the detail tab, and I'm going to pull that luminance noise reduction up plus 20. And let's look. Okay, I can definitely see a lot of that noise 
is gone from here now. We're just going to go up to plus 25. And now that we've done that, I'm fairly satisfied with this overall image. Now, if I wasn't talking you through this, of course, this would go a little quicker because I just go in and do my regular routine in here. But this one has come across pretty nice. Now, let's compare it to the, its JPEG neighbor. So the JPEG that was shot at the same time that I also did a little editing to. So I'm just arrowing over and there's the JPEG. So it looks to me things are a little more darkened down in this and not quite as tan. So, you know, the foreground, remember, I actually added, we, we, uh, we did a little negative exposure in there. And now let's take a look at the skies. So we richened up the skies a little more in that, uh, in that shot as well. And it also stands out just a little bit more on those window reflections and on the light coming out of certain windows as well. Overall, though, let's go back to this. Either one of these would probably go over well with most people. I'm actually liking the darker mood here, um, accentuating that outdoor living space where the lights are going to be on in the evenings to come out and enjoy sunsets as well. So to enjoy that twilight time. But so there we go. There is a twilight photo um, shot very low from a drone uh, from the Mavic 2 Pro drone, just in case you're wondering. And um, I think we'll do one more of these uh, from a different angle, a different perspective, but we're going to break this up into two different segments. So let's go ahead and wrap this one up here. And, you know, let me know if you're satisfied with this edit or if you've got comments and suggestions as to how this could be improved further. You can see out in the distance, there's a little bit of different color and the sunset is turning another 90 degrees from where we're facing is where the sun's setting. But it was a very, very subtle sunset. I hope you enjoyed this particular little lecture here and we'll be doing another one. So I hope you'll enjoy that one too.